Hey everybody, today I am going to be talking about Gaspar Noé films and I'm going to be ranking them from worst to best. I've always wanted to do one of these and I just happen to love Gaspar Noé and he just happens to have not that many films so it's easy. <laughs> I will just say that Vortex, his most recent film, uh, has not been released near me so uh, I, I have not seen that one but every other one is going to be included and I'm talking about uh, his feature length films. Before we get into that though, I am going to plug my website as always. It is deepfocuslens.com. I am an artist and I do commission portraits and I sell prints of my work. If that is something that you're interested in, you can always go to the website below. And if you have a question about a portrait or a print, you can always email me. My email is in the description box below as well. I know that a lot of people dislike Gaspar Noé and that's fine. I, I understand where they're coming from. Um, but for me, the reason that I like him is there are a lot of directors out there that are very subversive. I say a lot. There are select few that are quite subversive, really, really push the boundaries and really um, shake up the collective. And they really do push the limits, which I, I encourage typically in art. But um, when it comes to Gaspar Noé, I feel like he's one of the few who is willing to really go out into the wilderness for long periods of time, you know, like the existential woods, if you will. Uh, and he's willing to put himself through the ringer in order to gain something deeper on the other side. While everybody else kind of tests the limits, he just goes clean over it. And, you know, sometimes that can be a problem. Sometimes uh, it can be fantastic, but for better or worse is very, very intriguing. So I will begin this list with uh, my least favorite, of course, of all of his films. And that is going to be Love, which came out in 2015. And I know it's a shocker. I really struggled with this one and I know that I'm not alone in that. A lot of people seem to struggle with this. I asked, you know, my patrons about their least favorite Gaspar Noé film and pretty much all of them said love. For me, I think one of the big issues is that this movie emphasized what I consider to be all of Gaspar Noé's weaknesses as a creator. Like I've said, he's a polarizing guy um, and I, I understand where that's coming from. But when I watch this film, it feels like suddenly I understand why people dislike him so much. And I feel like, you know, if I had never seen a Gaspar Noé film and this was the first film I saw that was like an introduction to him, I would be very put off by him. One of the things he's really not good at is uh, kind of the typical aspects of storytelling. He's not really good at characters and character motivations and dialogue because that's not really his focus typically. Uh, fleshing the themes out is also something that he often struggles with, I find. And that's okay. You know, there is an improvisational quality that really uh, serves uh, the style very well at times and I you know I find the messiness to his films sometimes quite amusing and charming uh, here though when it's so heavily emphasized and when like the whole crux of everything is built um, on your characters uh, that's when it's tough for me to get through because everything is so empty and uh, just as an experience it's very static which you know, when you think about Gaspar Noé, you, you, you tend to think more like three-dimensional and, and constant movement, really being immersed in the experience. Um, I think one of his great abilities is to kind of blur the edges of a frame where you, you know, you're fully one with the experience. But this film kind of lacks a lot of that immersion for me. And uh, I look at a movie like I Stand Alone, which is his very first feature-length film, and that one also is very static. The shots don't really move, but what I think makes that film better is that, you know, there's this contrast between the stillness of everything and, you know, all this, like, turbulent, tumultuous, you know, stuff that's going on in this very compelling protagonist's mind. You can understand the character and you can relate to him and you slowly get pulled into uh, his world, his nihilistic point of view, and then, you know, it, it kind of causes you to have to reevaluate. I think a lot of your morals. But with love, again, it just didn't work for me. Uh, there's just not a lot going on here. It's very soporific, but not in the right ways. Uh, it's monotonous and it's redundant and um, it just feels empty cinematically and I just, I do not like it. Next on my list is Lex Arterna, which came out in 2019. And I actually saw this film fairly recently. It is a shorter film for Gaspar Noé, but you know, it still technically counts as a feature length film. Uh, it's a behind the scenes sort of movie that's like a meta mockumentary. And it's really exploring a lot of the destructive and exploitive aspects of art and creativity and how a lot of that can blend into the idea of, you know, subliminal cinematic messages. And it is a cool concept, though the length of the film, I think for me, left a little bit to be desired because it kind of condenses the thesis. It makes it very focused, which can be interesting. I, I do 
find the split screens to be a unique device, very Brian De Palma, and you know, the look is very Dar Dario Argento, which of course, you know, Noe loves, but I'm not sure it works uh, for a long period as a, as a tension building device for me. Uh, but I do like that, you know, like most Noe films, it has a very um, lysergic mood and it has really incredible imagery. I just wish that it had the same impact of some of his longer films, uh, his more ambitious films for sure. This one does feel maybe just a little bit half-baked and also it, my problem ever since uh, Enter the Void is that he kind of settles into a, a sort of formula that reinforces the same concept of like death and rebirth. But each time he uses it, it feels a little bit less special and like it's lacking a little bit in an imagination. And I definitely felt that here a little bit. That said, the ending to this film, maybe the last 10 minutes, is spectacular. I think it's actually one of my favorite moments in a Noe film, ironically. It's that strobe light, those blinking lights that are really painful to the eyes or like harsh to the eyes as a viewer. Uh, but the experience of it I found to be extremely profound. And I, you know, I discussed more of that in the review that I did for it. All the facets that he's tackling throughout the film in terms of themes somehow come to life through the sensations and less kind of, you know, the story devices and all of that. And that is one of the things that I really love about Noe when he's, when he's on. But it felt just the most present and lysergic and you do feel right on the edge of destruction and like some sort of creative enlightenment as well. It's, a, it's an amazing sequence. Next on my list, I pick I Stand Alone and this film came out in 1998 and it was his very first feature length film. I struggled about this one on where to put it. Uh, I do like it, I think it's a very, solid effort, especially for a first film. And I guess I put it here because I don't think it's quite as effective as his greatest works, but at the same time, it's got something really effective and really gritty and powerful about it that I, unfortunately, I don't think people talk about this film that often, but it has, like I mentioned before, a very gritty, very nihilistic, grotesque feeling to it. And Noe is almost daring you in a way to see how much of the nihilism and the negativity that that you can take. It, it has a very Dostoevsky style. As I mentioned before when I talked about love, I, I love the static nature of this particular film in contrast to that one because I feel like uh, there's something really powerful about that contrast, this kind of monotony, this gray, this stillness, this simplicity. And yet the whole while there's this violence and this squalid feeling constantly brewing within it and it's eventually going to erupt. And it's a very kind of basic allegory that we can all sort of attach ourselves to in the beginning. We can see this character and instantly, you know, we understand this person because we are this person. Just a human being that has to deal with the unfortunate negative aspects of life and just the, the natural pains that come along with life. And um, naturally though, his decisions become more and more uh, destructive and unhinged. And because you really connect to him, as he starts to spiral more and more, I think it forces you to consider your own morals and why you feel certain ways about things. And if you are, if one is pushed to such a degree, what happens to them? I love that Noe can bring you into the most primal, most dark, most brutal uh, ideas, situations where, you know, the moral code and, and social order of everything is gone and it forces you to completely reevaluate the way that you see things. You're always forced into some sort of nightmare in every single one of his movies. All of them are difficult experiences to a degree. Uh, but I think that there's a meaning to that. A lot of people find that to be exploitive or, you know, just shocking for the sake of being shocking. But I find that the ugliness of these situations eventually, you know, you come out on the other side feeling like you've gained something. There's a lot of ugliness and pain in these situations in this film. And yet there's also a strange beauty. There's something devastating and haunting yet poetic about it. And I just enjoy the boldness of this film. I think it's not as flourishy or ambitious, like I said, as some of his other films. And it does feel like a first film, but it sets the stage for sure. And it's just more kind of a, a more minimalist version of Gaspar Noé. Next, I'm going to pick Climax, which, you know, I'm very vocal about my love for that film. It's the experience and the thrill of it that I really attach myself to, despite the messiness. The more that you watch the film, the more that uh, a lot comes to light, and yet at the same time, a lot of the flaws reveal themselves. I don't feel that it's as cohesive as it could have been. And I kind of wish that there was a little bit more consistency in terms of the little plots in the background, just the little threads. Narratively, I think it would have brought things together in a way that was more satisfying, but you know, that's Noe, and he really didn't come to the set here with a, with a script, just kind of a basic idea. And there is something very exciting about that. But what I think I like about this film is that it's like, it's like a weird, horror film slash musical slash, you know, surrealist 
uh, experience. I don't really know what to call it, but I think I love the gimmick that it relies on in order to get you into this lysergic experience. The idea of all these people at a party and they accidentally drink sangria that is laced with LSD. All they really use here in order to create the effect is lighting and just the camera movement. And there's something very simple about that, yet extremely effective. It creates this feeling of chaos slowly flooding into the room, and then it just builds and builds and builds, and people are drowning in it. It's really, a, really an incredible sort of uh, tension building, I think. And I like the idea of all of these people that maybe they, they thought they knew each other, they thought that they knew themselves, and suddenly they are thrown into this... Um, social interactive experience that they cannot control and that forces them to lose a solid foundation of, of what they considered right or wrong, their identity, the comfort of reality. There's something very harrowing about the experience of navigating the ego in such a way where it's almost as if, you know, the space itself feels like the cerebrum. And because this is a movie about dancers, it's like, you know, that idea just kind of feeds into this concept of we're right on the edge of abstraction and we're right on the edge of the most dangerous things, the most creative things, art and pain, blurring the edges between that beauty and that chaos. Um, it captures what I see at the end of Lux Arterna, but in a, a different way and I think a, a more um, interesting way, cinematic way. And it feels more like the fully dimensional experience that I think I was looking for in Lux Arterna. Um, the next film on my list, second to my favorite, is Enter the Void. And this film came out in 2009. And when I just look at all of his movies, when I think about Into the Void, easily I consider it to be his most ambitious work. It is his 2001, I think you could say. It is certainly his most visually impressive. It's one of the most interesting movie experiences I have ever had in my life. And it's one of the movies that I, you know, it stayed with me for a very, very long time because of the way that it, it made me feel while I'm watching it. It is bold. It is very psychedelic. It is soporific, kaleidoscopic, all of these things. It's um, really pushing the ideas into a, a very, very scary place, far beyond just the concept of watching the film. It doesn't feel like a movie. Like Climax, I think it's wanting to place you more into the experience, immersive three-dimensional almost. And I just love that. I love that, that it plunges so deeply into these areas with such eagerness and there's an energy to it, a buzz. I know a lot of people consider Noe films to be really, really depressing. Weirdly, I find there to be a positivity and I'm not saying what happens in the films are, are positive. No, most of the things you see are traumatizing and devastating and yet out of that somehow, I feel like, again, there's a meaning. The film finds a very interesting balance between the Freudian concepts going on, um, the notion of climbing back into the womb, which you know seems to be a fixation for most human beings, <clears throat> the cycle of life, the cosmic possibilities beyond all of us that I find to be the most meaningful in film. Uh, lots of people say that the film drags and such, but you know, some people think 2001 drags too much. That's not necessarily my experience. I know it feels like you yourself are experiencing blood, sweat, and tears, but again, it, it wouldn't feel right if it was just blood, sweat, and tears. And there are some directors that I do feel are more interested in the agony rather than um, the experience and what you can arrive at later. Sometimes it just takes a lot of pain before you can come out and see things in a different way. Uh, sometimes uh, it almost takes like a, a hypnosis or an out-of-body experience for you to kind of recontextualize everything in your life and understand how important life is, the meaning of life. Um, this film is very literally uh, about somebody who is having an out-of-body experience. Yes, this film is flawed and it's certainly expository in ways that I do not like in very typical Gaspar Noé fashion, but it's, it's truly one of my favorite films and it's one of the most visually interesting films I've ever seen. There is something very euphoric about it that, yeah, sorry, but I find it to be um, uplifting, uh, ironically. And finally, my favorite Gaspar Noé film of all time is, you guessed it, Irreversible. And this film came out in 2002. For me, I think the reason that I like this the most is because it just means the most to me. I find it to be his most developed film and just, yeah, it's just the most fully realized, it's the most emotionally potent. And I think it's also just the most devastating because of how it, it removes the context of things. And that's part of the whole experience that he's going for here. This is a, a story that is told in reverse. So therefore you experience the outcome rather than what leads you to get there. And it forces you to look at things differently. It forces you to see the outcome of things before you know how we arrived there. 
uh, and it forces you to change the way that you view every single experience or every single every single situation here. But these particular situations are extremely dark ones and ones that really, really put the viewer through the ringer. And uh, Noe, I think, just by removing the context in this way and telling the story in reverse, he loves time. He's very fascinated by the concept of it. And I think this film really employs that in a really interesting way. Again, the end is the beginning, is the end. It has like a Ouroboros, snake eats its tail, cyclical sort of feeling, which is very much Gaspar Noe's philosophy or what he's interested in. Death, disaster, reset, euphoria, rebirth. And I don't know, I, I feel like this movie really captures all of those things really well. It's the most bold in that depiction and also for me the most cohesive. I think people often don't like it because of the shock of it, because it's it's really, really hard to watch for some people. For instance, there's a, a very notorious rape scene in the film. and. Uh, you know, people consider Noe to be somebody that really dives into the lion's den with a, a sense of brashness. Um, but I think a lot of people think he went too far in that scene. But to me, it's an absolutely crucial scene. And I think it's the shock of it and the violence in it that people just naturally come to the conclusion that this is a movie that is very negative towards women. It, it glorifies violence towards women. And I, I don't think that's right at all. I think if you watch it again and, you know, get past the the uh, whiplash of the experience of that scene and really look at it, really look at the movie as a whole. I think this is a film that is very pro-femininity and it's very much almost glorifying the maternal nature of women. It almost sees them as divine creatures and it's the men who are often the ones here that are framed negatively, who are the ones that take a terrible situation and, and escalate the violence and the madness. At times I do feel like the masculinity and femininity in the film could have been a little bit more complex. Um, but as it stands, I think it's a really important piece. There are movies like, you know, Memento as an example, who use a, a story told in reverse sort of idea. And uh, I think at times it, it runs the risk of being too gimmicky, where it relies too much on just, you know, the way that the film is edited. But for me, this film doesn't feel like a simple device. It's really plunging you into the action, uh, digging into those most, the most primal and most disgusting parts of humanity, the most disturbing elements of ourselves, and we are all capable of it if pushed too far. But very few of us will ever be pushed so far. And the key is how the audience is involved in that as the voyeurs. And I think one of the reasons why people struggle with Noé or they, they maybe find his films offensive is because he really involves you in the action. He makes you feel almost as if you are a, a witness to something really terrible. But all of that, again, I find to be just a, a more interesting way of looking at things. This movie in particular is a very tough one. And, you know, obviously I always tell people, be careful. And I, I really be careful with all of Gaspar Noé films. They are not for the faint of heart, not for the squeamish. But if you are somebody that really likes those kinds of experiences or or stretching the cinematic, uh, the cinematic experience, I say, check him out. You may hate him, you may love it, but you know what? At least it'll be something different. Hate him or love him, he's very fascinating. Um, but yeah, so that is my list of Gaspar Noé films ranked from worst to best. I hope that you enjoyed it. Go ahead and let me know what you think. Go ahead and rank them if you've seen them all. And that is my video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Over here you will see my patrons. Thank you guys so much for your support. If you are interested in supporting, the link for that is below as well as the rest of my social media information. You can watch more videos here and you can subscribe if you'd like. Catch you next time.